great to see you in person. Thanks for joining us. Oh, happy to be here. So the fact that you do have the Space Force mission this weekend, and then, of course, we had the first meeting for the Biden administration of the Space Council just earlier this week as well. I mean, securing space, it's become a huge topic, ever-growing topic. Um, how do you think about it, especially given the fact that China, for example, has been so hot with its launch streak? What a great question. You know, it is about now a warfighting domain where we have to strive to deter aggression in space. So how do we do that? Well, we do it in a couple of ways. First, we make the assets that are there more resilient, more able to absorb an attack, but also we need to make it less easy for those assets that China and Russia are developing and have been developing for a decade now to access our, our satellites on orbit and harm them so that we make their investments obsolete by leapfrogging them with new technologies that do these two things. Is the U.S. working fast enough to do this, to counter Russia and China? And if so, what does that mean for, for example, the launch cadence for ULA? Well, we are now. So they, they've been working on, on space weapons for a decade. We haven't been. So now we're in a big hurry to leapfrog that and get in front of them. And we're working very hard. And what it means for launch cadence is one of the other things we talk about in resilience is rapid reconstitution in the ability to stay ahead of that threat. So you will see the launch cadence go up over time. So part of that launch cadence will involve, in coming years, the new next generation reusable rocket that ULA is developing, which mm -hmm. is the Vulcan Centaur. Um, where are we in terms of the timeline for the maiden flight? And I ask that because it is a rocket that is being made with American rocket engines that are being supplied by Jeff Bezos company, Blue Origin. It is. Well, we're in the end game now. This is the hardest and most exciting part of any rocket development program. It is being paced by those brand new engines. They're new technology and new fuel. They will be delivered to us early next year, and that will support a launch later in the year. In fact, two launches before the year is out. So early next year, it sounds like Blue Origin's delayed. They are. I was hoping to get those engines for Christmas. I have giant stockings at home <laughs> waiting for them, but they've just had a little bit more, uh, I'll say it's taking them a little longer to fabricate my production engines. They're in the factory now, being built at Blue Origin. Co you know, the uh, COVID epidemic has affected them and their supply chain, and it's just taking a little bit longer. But they're doing very, very well. There's been no problems with them. And in fact, we're doing the final testing, what we call certification testing. And that is just going really, really well. So I have to ask about the competitive lands landscape. You directly compete with Elon Musk's SpaceX, which has taken something like, mm -hmm. based on some estimates, uh, more than half of the global launch market, uh, at least excluding China right now. How are you navigating all that competition, especially when we have other rocket makers starting to yeah. reach orbit right now and when you have Starship from SpaceX also on the horizon? Well, that's... A, you know, actually a good thing for our country to have a little bit broader industrial base and certainly competition is healthy for our industry. So we're very happy with where we're at. Uh, you know, many of the launches that you refer to in a total are actually the Starlink launches. They're their own launches. In terms of what is actually competitive and open to competition, we're doing quite well. We're basically splitting the market between us. And as Vulcan comes online, it will be so much more competitive, not only being a less expensive rocket, but a rocket optimized for multiple payloads. And, of course, our sweet spot in the marketplace, which is the most difficult high energy orbits to reach. So final question, because they, they are wrapping me. Um, you've been around for a while. ULA has been around for a while. It, it's privately held. Um, but you've seen a lot of booms and busts in the space sector. As we do see all of these companies in the sector go public right now, what do investors need to keep in mind? Well, I think investors want to pay attention to what capability will be added. A lot of the prior investment has been towards trying to introduce a new way to do the same thing, maybe make it more affordable or accessible. But what our country needs now are new capabilities to contend with these threats and to open up a whole new commercial market in cislunar space. Invest in that, not fighting over the stuff we already have. Cislunar space, of course, going back to the moon and colonizing the moon, something mm -hmm. that we are talking increasingly about. Tori Bruno, it's always great to get your thoughts. Thanks for joining us here and in person at the Reagan National Defense Forum. We appreciate it.